Good afternoon. This is Tony Dottino doing my Live with Tony uh, Facebook underneath the USA Memory Championship. And uh, I wanted to just share with uh, my audience a number of different calls and reading materials that I've been a part of over the last uh, couple of weeks. And a common theme that keeps coming out over and over and over again which is the challenge and or the question of our educational systems today. And are we providing uh, students with the right foundation, with the right skills, with the right self-confidence of what is happening in today's world? How do we have a job? How do we keep that job? There's no such thing as keeping a job in the sense of I'm going to work with a company or an organization for the next 30 years. I think those days are changing. So it's demanding that our students, be it middle school, high school, college, really develop a new set of skills that may not be taught today. So what are some of the things that at least I'm hearing and reading about that I wanted to at least share in today's uh, workshop uh, or Live with Tony with you? that does come out of workshops that we do. So if we look at our Maximum Memory Mastery online course, what's becoming more and more obvious to the team is we probably have to rename that course because it's not a course just on memory. It's got so many other components that are in demand today that the course is probably going to need, it's going to need, it's going to need a name change so we can let people know a broader level of what's involved. But it's really today about our ability to learn, our ability to, to get smarter as we get older and grow our own skills and our own abilities and intelligences. So let's, uh, let's take a quick look at what's going on today. First of all, people are challenging the value of education as it relates to college, their college degrees, what is it getting them ready to do? What are some of the skills that uh, are necessary to go out and, and be successful in, in, in our lives? And we see so many kids today having degrees and not being able to use that degree to advance the state of their life. And that then we scratch our heads and say, my goodness, has that been a worthwhile investment? So you see more and more analysis being done over the value of an education. So the first thing I always think about, and again, I, I may have a bit of bias here, is what have we learned about our own capacities as it relates to our own intelligence, our own ability to, to be confident in our own skills and confident within ourselves? And what skills can we teach people to do that? So after doing a, a piece of analysis that I needed for a couple of school systems, one of the things that's come back from the review of that work is kids that were in high school, that went off to college, that are now doing well in their, in their business worlds or in their career fields, all attribute having been a part of the USA Memory Championship as one of the first core ingredients that gave them the self-confidence and gave them a boost in realizing that there was more they could do in their lives than they ever, ever thought possible. So right off the bat, it's how do we improve our ability to learn? How do we improve our ability to realize there's more that we can do outside of our own self-limitations that could make a difference to us as we go about our lives? And so as I've been talking with educators and different groups of people over the last several weeks, there's, there's a couple of things that are really coming out that are consistent. Number one is how well are we adapting to social interaction, meaning how well is our interpersonal intelligence and our ability to relate to others? Because as I've read over and over in several things this weekend, it's not what you know, it's who you know that gets a foot in the door. And so where have we learned how to be socially adept or do we just think those are genes that, you know what, they entered our brain when we were born and therefore I'm going to be a social extrovert or even an introvert that has social skills. You know, we sometimes label people as introverts and extroverts and therefore if they're an introvert, we just give up on them and say, well, they're not going to be socially adept. And that's a myth. 
even introverts can learn how to improve their social skills. Extroverts, we think, well, they're extroverts, but what are their social skills? How are they adapting to the world that we enter? How do they network? Um, and, and so in reading and, and studying all of the things, and we learn more and more about social skills have become crucial. Our networking groups, who do we know? What do we talk to them about? How do we crystallize those conversations into what we define as our own life's priorities and what we would, what our passions are, what we enjoy doing, what we would like to uh, be able to accomplish that we define as our own personal uh, definition of success. So how do we do those things? It becomes an imperative. In our Maximum Memory Mastery Online course, there are two modules and, and two lesson plans that are in there that really come back to fit to this. One is, how do we remember people's names and faces? Have we learned from all of the great uh, writers in the past? Remembering a person's name and a little bit about them could be one of the most important things that we could ever do in terms of learning interpersonal skills and social intelligence. So how well do we remember somebody we look at and do we want to learn more about them as opposed to fire hosing them with more about you, you, you themselves? And so it's how do we do that? Well, the first thing we want to always do is when we meet somebody is we always want to focus on what their name is and what is their name and how might I encode it in my brain so that it becomes spontaneous. And so I don't worry anymore and I don't get an anxiety. Oh, I don't remember their name. I'm not going to remember who they are. And the next time I see them, I won't be able to just snap that off. So the first thing we want to make sure is we do is we're listening to person speaking to us to focus on their name. And then when we hear it, we I always say to people, well, let's spell it out. So. I met uh, some people uh, today, Caitlin. So I hear the word Caitlin, I say, oh, Caitlin, and so happens. I want to spell the word Caitlin. Is that K-A-T-E-L-Y-N? Is that a K-A-T-E, Caitlin, or is it a K-A-T-L-Y-N? And so, by ironically as it is, they each spelt it, one with the E, one without the E. So now I want to remember and attach Caitlin with the E to one and Caitlin without the E to the other. But I'm not focused on, what, what, gee, what do I want to talk to them about? I'm focused on looking at their facial expressions and their facial marks and how I attach their name to it. So that the next time I'm Zooming in a conference, I remember the difference between the E and without the E. And you make up you know, silly stories and fun stories. You make it amusing and interesting so your brain has a, a desire to remember it. So hearing it, then spelling it out, verbalizing it, and then repeating it several times in a conversation so that you focus on their face and on their name and some of the things that they're saying about themselves becomes the priority as opposed to, gee, what am I going to be telling them about myself? Now, you, you better know what that is. You want to be an expert on that. So you knowing what you want to talk about should just be filed away. So when you find that the space is right or the timing is right, you just pick that up and off you go. You should not need a memory course to tell people about the key things about yourself that may be relevant to a conversation that you're having. So one of the things I'm always thinking about is I'm on these different Zoom calls, and sometimes there's four people on them, sometimes there may be eight or ten, is what are some of the key nuggets that I want to drop into a Zoom call that as people are listening to it, will catch them. And then if I have uh, a couple of, you know, ten people on a call, I may want to go back to one, two, or three of them and use their name in part of a conversation so that it demonstrates I know who they are, I can see their name, but I want to use it back in conversation because I may see them on a different call, I may talk to them at a different time, you may see them someday if we ever get back to social interactions, 
and I may remember what their name is, which then immediately makes a very positive impression in a positive direction, which then allows me to advance, okay, let's move on with an agenda and let's see if we can agree on how we may collaborate and make some good things happen for the values and services that we deliver to whomever our clients or customers may be. <clears throat> so most people, when they think of social intelligence, do not think about, gee, the first step in that would have to be remembering a person's name and then attaching it to their face and then having some things about it. And if you can just keep it and make it that simple, it's amazing what you can do and then building on that as we learn more about them, as we discuss more and more things with them in the future, how you grow what we call branches. So there's a second piece in our online course that talks about how do you mind map and how do you take a mapping of a mind and build out skills so that you encode critical information that has some sustainability and has some long-term impacts to it. So it helps you to build the social network and the contacts that you need in today's world. That's my message for today. I hope it strikes each of you at least with one new thought that helps you in building relationships within your own business, within your own lives, and helps you become a more successful person than you ever thought you can do. So this is uh, my three o'clock Tuesday. I'll be back on uh, Wednesday night at seven. Have a good afternoon, and if you want to send me any personal emails, it's A-D-O-T-T-I-N-O -T -T at AOL.com.